Hello, my name is Mark and welcome to I Am Organic Gardening. Now today is a gorgeous day outside. We're at the end of October, it's almost 80 degrees out today. And you can see behind me those beautiful trees that are changing color and the leaves are gonna fall down soon. I actually got some delivery, some leaves in, at least about five truckloads and everything is going great. Now I wanna to explain today in today's video what the most important thing you have to have in your garden for healthy plants and make everything work better for you give your plants an immune system and that is fungi not me i'm a fungi but the other kind of fungi that grows in your soil so stay tuned and see what goes on and we're going to look at the leaf piles and i'm going to show you some leaf mold but the most important thing is is to get that fungi growing in your garden you need 50 percent fungi in your soil and 50 percent bacteria it's a combination of both everybody th thinks just bacteria in your garden and there's all these weed concentrations and barrels of water that just grows bacteria but you really need both you need both bacteria and fungi in your soil at a balance of 50 50 and people will dispute it and not believe in it or say there should be more bacteria in your soil but you need that initial soil that made by mother nature and that's the balance of 50 50 in the soil for growing vegetables it's higher for growing trees and all these other types of things and lower for other things but most garden variety of vegetables at least 95 percent of them want a bacteria and fungi ratio of one to one one bacteria to one fungi and there's all types of fungi and there's all types of bacteria and i'll show you how to make your own fungi at home you don't have to buy anything or spend money just enjoy the video and interpret it the way the best way you can if you have a question just leave it in the comments below and we'll see what's going on now let me get back out to the field and I'll show you some very interesting things so this is a fungi this is a mushroom that grows to the surface and releases its spores underneath that cap that you see there now Mushrooms are not plants. They're not green. They don't have chlorophyll in them and they don't have roots on them. They have something called hyphae, which is very important. That's what breaks up your soil. That's what allows, that's like building bridges and tunnels inside the soil. So all the other microorganisms like bacteria and protozoa and nematodes can swim around and go from one place to another, delivering food to your plants. So the fungi you see there has also underneath the top part of it, this is where all the spores release. And that's what is also native to your area. They're going to be going all around and looking for food. Now we just have to deliver food on the surface so these can grow. They also need water, they also need sunlight, and they also need temperature for the growth very nicely. But you can see here, this is the key here. This is awesome. Here I have an area that's like, let's say uh, 15 feet by 15 feet. And this is fall leaves that I put on the ground last year. I put them down about two feet thick. Over winter, we'll compact down about a foot thick. Then I go in there, I kind of fluff them up again because they're matted down. I don't put anything on it. They pretty much stick together so the wind doesn't blow them away. But what you're looking here is this area, I only planted two seeds of this gourd that I had left over and those are all the yellow and then you can see some are orange because of the frost that we got the other day, which is unbelievable. We had a frost a few days ago and it's 80 degrees today. But you can see the power of fungi, how it improves your soil underneath and also retains water and also the organic matter retains water and everything is great. You can see how beautiful this gourd went. Now this is just one plant and pretty much grew around 10 to 15 feet long with all kinds of runners now here you can see everything it produced because of the fungi in the soil to help it wasn't just bacteria it's fungi and all these gourds grew and you can see the stem still there and vines and it just did extremely well we had a lot of rain this year and that's also another thing you have to keep your ground moist and also with the covering leaves it does that it allows a fungi to grow because everything needs water that's more important than even having fungi in your soil water is a key thing also too and you can see how many of these gourds i got from just 
maybe let's say three seeds so three seeds that i put in the ground you can see how many gourds i got i had another spot we sold them all out there's only so many people that buy this so i'll give you a close-up of what the gourds look like now you see it has some kind of uh, dimples on it, or pimples we call it, or dimples, and they grew very nicely. They're just an attractive uh, Halloween and Thanksgiving type of thing that you can put on the table for decoration. They're awesome. A couple of them are a little bit you know, sickly or something like that, but, but the majority of them are awesome and can still be sold. I also want to point out here, you can see around that there's not a lot of small weeds growing up in between. Yes, the plant pretty much shaded out the area in the soil, but you don't see a lot of other problems. I have this beautiful dock growing over here, that nice green plant that almost looks like a hosta. That does well in leaves also too, because weeds do not like a high fungi let's say area to grow in they're pretty much uh love to grow in a certain nitrogen type of soil with not a lot of fungi in it and that keeps the weeds at bay just to put on it so if you're thinking about putting leaves over your garden it's great but it's more important now this is only one type of fungi that's growing from these leaves or several different types but you need another type called mycorrhizal fungi that actually uses the root of the plant to be a host and grow in there that that's why over here, that dock plant is not a weed, that's hosting mycorrhizal fungi inside its root system and actually spreading it to the ground and allowing more air and water to go into the soil. So here are some beautiful fall leaves that I got delivered this week, about five days ago. And I'm gonna put a compost thermometer in there and see if they're heating up. Now they don't have to heat up, that's the thing. We're not making compost, we're just making leaf mold. And I'll show you the final product in a little bit. But what I normally do is I take these piles after I get them delivered, I spread around with a tractor, and I, only, I wanna reduce it down to like about maybe two feet tall, like I said before, and then they'll over winter, they'll compact down to a foot tall and they also take a rototiller and kind of fluff them up so they get air and water in there that's a nice key thing about it you don't if you want to make leaf mold you don't have to put it in a plastic bag i've seen lots of videos on this and or a big pile of leaves someplace you don't want leaves over two feet tall because you want it to compact down to about a foot tall you want air and water in there so that fungi can grow that's the key thing in a little bit i'll show you leaf mold that i'm standing on that i did a year ago and that's your fungi that you can add to your soil or just take the leaves and put them right on top of your garden it will grow fungi in your soil now it's only a few different you know there's about a thousand different types or more but the main one is that mycorrhizal fungi that lives in a plant root and that's going to give your plant a healthy thing but you're going to get healthy soil and a lot of fungi growing in the soil at a ratio one to one with bacteria and that's what you want so I want to show you this too because a lot of people might ask in the comments now what you're seeing here is we have our fall leaves but also I have mixed in there is pine needles so let me go over uh, some of the basic fungi foods that you have here that's open to the air so let me go over the, some of the fungi food that you can put outside on top of your ground and you will attract those spores that are flying around the air and go to that pile that you have that's at least a foot tall or maybe two feet tall to start with and then we'll compact down. So number one we have here is our fall leaves. That's a great source to grow fungi in. Number two, we have pine needles. Number three, we have straw. Number four, you can use coconut core. Number five, you can use cardboard and all these other things are fantastic do not use peat moss it doesn't do anything it, it's a uh it's, it doesn't even attract fungi to grow in your soil and the last thing i want to add in and that's the, probably the easiest one to get a hold of for a lot of people is it's very important wood chips wood chips is a great fungi grower these are all let's say high carbon to nitrogen ratio they're over like say 25 percent or you know uh, 25 to 1 carbon to nitrogen ratio and that's what you're looking for that's what you see in there let's say you throw grass clippings on top of your garden or you have a pile of grass clippings grass clippings is just purely 
bacteria food. It will eat it, suck the nitrogen out of it, and then go away. It doesn't really uh, enhance your garden by any means. It's not bad, but you need this stuff. You need fungi food. What we have here is leaf mold. Now I know you can't see the depth of this or something like that, but again, this was about two feet tall down to a foot, and this is what's left a year later. Now this is what I want you to just do. If you could do a, a little patch in your backyard that's like four feet by four feet and two feet tall of just leaves that you want to pile where all those other things that I mentioned, that's what you want to do. Now let's just move this out of the way. Now this is top. Now you can see how it's just black underneath here that's because it's turning the carbon going up in the atmosphere now these leaves didn't rot on top or something like that the real gold is down below right at the soil level so let's get to that soil level like it says here and all these leaves if I went underneath the microscope which I'll do in the future I got to get a new microscope up oh, here's another thing that you don't want really want that's called a wire worm that's not a good thing to have in the garden but anyway now you can see the soil down below this is the stuff that you want that's in there that's growing fungi and you can make a tea out of this and spread it around your garden this is beautiful stuff this is the stuff you want and this is here's a piece of clay that is just oops easy to maneuver around and because it's all just delicious stuff in here this is what you want you want all that fungi to be growing in your garden i should have brought a shovel out here but that's beautiful clay soil turning into nice rich soil because it's got fungi available in it so let's take our compost thermometer. Now you can see it's at, oh, what do we got here? We got it at 80 degrees, that's our temperature outside right now. And we're just gonna take it and try to place it in the middle here. There we go. And let's see if it heats up, or if that pile is nice and warm from just sitting there with a little bit of moisture in there. Now this is just leaves and pine needles. And we'll go back and let's say another I don't know five or ten minutes here something like that and see if it, the gauge moved at all so it's been exactly just 10 minutes here now let's get a close-up on this and you can see here that it's about exactly 120 degrees so what's doing this what's generating the heat microbes those bacteria and fungi are sitting there mostly fungi right now because i have fungi food now what all this is what it's doing here is this pile is attracting fungi spores for a food source it's like a buffet all the spores that are in the air that i don't care where you live whether you live in florida arizona your air is full of spores of fungi and they're traveling around and they're looking for food they can't control how they fly or how many there are but it's, this is a pile of fungi food that spore lands on it, starts eating that fungi food, all that list that is there, and it's gonna just do it enhance for your soil. Again, you can take this stuff and add water to it in the future and just dump it on your garden, make a tea out of it, or you can just add the, the material itself as mulch to keep the weeds down. It's that easy, people. You don't have to buy anything. This is encouraging you just to understand that nature is awesome. It really is. And it's working right in front of you. It went from 80 degrees to 120 degrees because that bacteria within five days and fungi is attacking all that stuff and has the right moisture and it's not compact yet and it's doing a fantastic job for you. So, um, my, um, <clears throat> my allergies are kicking in. I'm sorry about that. But give this video a good thumbs up. And just, if you can see anything here, that's my thumb. And just give it a good thumbs up. And leave a comment below if you're using this or what type of technique you're doing to get fungi back in your soil. And also, too, cover crops do the same thing. If you don't have all these other six items that I mentioned, you can also use a cover crop, and that will do the same thing for your soil. Enjoy. I'll see you again with another gardening video soon. We're going to be going over all types of cover crops and other and techniques. And I hope to see you shortly with another video. Thanks and enjoy your day.